Did you know the 43-year-old Voyager 2 was just the second spacecraft to reach the space between the stars, otherwise known as interstellar space? Hello and welcome back to our channel. We have an interesting video today for you on Voyager 2. It is more about the time when Earth lost communications with Voyager 2, and after a year in the darkness, NASA can tell you about it again. Not just not it, Voyager 2 has travelled and explored frontiers where no mankind has ever dreamt of stepping in, such as Uranus, Neptune, and obviously Interstellar. Can you believe that in January NASA was preparing to shut down because Voyager 2 was consuming way too much power? It is quite impossible to check the status as the spacecraft is about 11.5 billion miles away. However, NASA was into this operation half-heartedly as Voyager 2 happens to be one of their precious old spacecraft that has achieved numerous explorations without even any updates. NASA has been at the forefront for several successful missions and behind each success. Failure was a stepping stone. NASA is after all run by humans and humans tend to make mistakes now and then. In a similar fashion, NASA lost touch with Voyager 2 for nearly a year and finally gained back their communication signal in November 2021. Like we mentioned earlier, there have been only five successful spacecraft that were designed well enough to have the energy to exit the gravitational pull of our solar system. You might have guessed by now that Voyager 2 was one of those successful spacecrafts, but we need to include the Voyager 1 as its performance exceeds the expectations of humankind. It has traveled the farthest at 22 billion kilometers while our hero today, Voyager 2, has only traveled 18.8 .8 billion kilometers. Still, Voyager 2 stands out for a special flyby in 1989. Its flyby was on Neptune and its moon, Triton, and it is the only encounter ever made by humanity with the eighth and final planet in our solar system. This Neptune expedition is the last one that originated in our Kuiper belt, which led us to the knowledge of Neptune's ring system along with a smaller number of moons and a range of characteristics on Triton, such as cryovolcanoes and its terrain. During this expedition, Voyager 2 had to fly past Neptune's North Pole so that it could have a close look at Triton, but instead it deviated Voyager 2's route far south to where the planets orbit the Sun, and since then, Voyager 2 has been on that trajectory for 31 years, with just one exception the Australian receiver dish, rendering it invisible to all members of the Deep Space Network. It is quite surprising that NASA lost touch with such an old but still powerful spacecraft last year. Let us talk a little bit of physics here to understand why we lose touch with our spacecraft. The further a spacecraft is from you, the further the signal must travel which is transmitted by you, and when it does reach its destination, the signal power would be lesser. As per the laws of light, the light signal spreads out in 2D perpendicular to the spacecraft's line of sight. Hence, if one spacecraft is twice as far away from another, then the distance between them is doubled, leading to double the time taken and one-fourth of the power of the original signal. And not only that, but the amount of energy used for this transmission also goes higher. To explain it further, if you are unable to judge the distance we are talking about, then imagine 500,000 Earth-sized planets lying next to each other and back. Whereas the electromagnetic signal used for the transmission is simple. It expands out in spherical shape from its source and can be detected with a fracking lens or a reflecting dish or a linear antenna. Let it be a terrestrial or celestial source. The observation you make will carry an underlying background noise. Hence, your signal must cross a specified threshold to be noticed rising above the noisy background. Now, you will be able to understand how they got lost, as they will be stuck with the technology once launched. And they were launched in 1977, and guess what propels the spacecraft? None other than the radioactive sources and their specific source, plutonium. 238 decays radioactively, thus releasing heat, which is, in turn, converted into energy. Now you would be able to understand that more material would decay over the period of time and will lead to lowering the amount of power available to the spacecraft, which in turn became the reason for the difficulty in receiving and transmitting the signals. As of 2021, the spacecraft only has 69% of the initial thermal energy, so no wonder it has only half the amount of output power. Now you must have been able to grasp the simple logic in space science. When our technology for receiving and transmission skills improve on Earth, then we will not have to face any more cases of losing communications with our spacecraft. Currently, NASA does have such a technology, which is a deep space network that acts as a radio antenna network. 
Three such huge radio antennas are located throughout the world. Canberra in Australia, Madrid in Spain, and Goldstone in California. Why particularly these countries? Well, they are situated equidistant across the globe, thus NASA can guarantee that at any given time, at least one of the antennas has a clear line of sight to the spaceship. As we had previously mentioned, the Canberra dish is quite special when it comes to Voyager 2, as it's completely focused on the Southern Hemisphere and can detect signals from far and very far south. However, around mid-March in 2020, the dish that contained the radio transmitter to communicate with Voyager 2 had to be shut down for maintenance. We could consider the COVID crisis as the reason for the delay in gaining back the communications as the team was reduced down to four. This engineering marvel has a radio antenna with a length of 70 meters from what we have explained till now. You can understand why we need large detectors to receive high and powerful transmitters, as they are best for broadcasting. So you can understand why the dish in Canberra is extra special. Now Voyager 2 was communicating through one of the two transmitters linked with the dish. However, it was shut down as it became too old, 47 years old. This was the reason for losing the communication signal with the Voyager 2. However, once the renovations were accomplished and essential upgrades were achieved, the operators of Voyager 2 performed the critical test of sending a set of commands to the spacecraft. The reason for the highlighted topic about Voyager 2 is this. Once they lost the communication, the operators had to work on all levels of the antenna, from the pedestal at the ground level to up at the feed cones at the center of the dish that are extended above the rim. Guess how much time it takes to send and receive signals between the Voyager 2 and the dish? 36 light hours. And finally, after 36 light hours, the dish received signals from the Voyager 2, making this whole process a huge success. NASA is definitely on the right track. Many scientists and researchers had written off that communication with the beyond was hopeless and even baseless. This communication has broken down all those skeptics. Now it is proven that as long as we can update our channels down here on Earth, we can continue having communication with the beyond through such spacecraft. Now humanity will have the ability to say hello, finally, to its explorer who is about 12 billion miles away. The end to the silence is well received by NASA and almost by everyone who has been aware of this situation on Earth. Our whole universe is open to us, thanks to Voyager 2. Hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, hit us with the like button and comment down below what you think of Earth's space exploration. Remember to subscribe to us for more interesting videos and select the bell icon to know further updates about our upcoming videos. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.